All right, everybody, welcome back. Cobra Trading here. It is Monday and time again to get into some charts for Bitcoin as well as my 10x coin pick. But first, I want to get into some news real quick. So there was a couple articles online that caught my interest today. This first one has to do with some DeFi news about the Avi project. Avi, Avi, am I saying that right? Anyway, this service is a credit delegation service, right? And it allows users to deposit funds and delegate their credit line to third parties. So the delegator gets a cut of the interest in return for their investment. So what about safety, right? You know, if there's no collateral, then, you know, what's really backing this? It's up to the holder of the collateral to decide the terms which will be reflected directly in the smart contract that's going to be shared between both of those parties. In this recent article, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. So one of them is they're looking at the SPX and how it was making all time highs last week. Uh, and they're stating that basically this is likely to spill over into crypto. Now, that's something that I completely agree with. Uh, we know that Bitcoin and the S&P 500 are very, very closely correlated in terms of price action. On Thursday, the chair of the Fed, Mr. Jerome Powell, will be discussing inflation rates, and that's going to be a really big deal. So that's going to be on Thursday at the Economic Policy Symposium. If inflation is through the roof, investors are going to be looking to invest their money into something that it's not going to lose value on the 28th of this month, 730 million options are going to expire. That's equivalent to 62,000 Bitcoin, right? They also note here in this article that in June, there was a billion that expired and it really didn't have an effect on the price action. And then this article also mentions about hash rate and stuff, which I was able to find another article that's a little more in depth on here. So hash rate, for those of the, you that don't know, is basically how we measure the total computing power that's on the Bitcoin network on a global scale. So naturally, the higher the hash rate, uh, the more people that are mining, right? In basic terms, that's the easiest way for me to explain it to you. And because we've seen some miners exiting, uh, we've seen this hash rate kind of just really die off the last two weeks. That's pretty much it for the news, guys. I just want to go over those couple things for you. Let's jump over to the charts and talk about Bitcoin. All right, so first let's take a look at our weekly chart. We have a bearish candle close for last week, but we had a really nice wick to the upside here, and we're currently holding on to this 11,550 level very, very nicely. Our ATR, if we turn on our indicators, is coming down just a little bit, but our MACD indicator is in bullish territory, and our RSI, well, it's not overbought, but it's it is on the high side a little bit. So coming down to the daily chart, the MACD is actually pretty bearish, but it's because we just had this, uh, this correction that we saw over the span of last week. The RSI is looking healthy, which isn't too bad. It's unbiased and just kind of sitting pretty for the moment. And we're still currently using this 3A2 level for our FIBs as pretty heavy resistance. Uh, reclaiming this, I think, would be a very positive sign. In terms of Ichimoku Cloud, if we turn this on real quick, not to make the chart too messy, but uh, we've got a lot of levels of support below us, right? So namely our Kijinsen right here, which is about 10,650. And that's a level that I've mentioned before. We also have support at our 50 EMA and our 100 EMA, which is actually right inside of our main support zone. So the article that I was talking about that I showed you guys mentioned 9.6 to 10K, right? Well, 9.6 has always been my bottom level here. I don't really have any issues with that, but we have a lot of support to break through before reaching those levels. I'm still bullish on Bitcoin, and I honestly think that we double tap uh, 14K before the end of the year. I really do. I think that we double tap this uh, before the end of the year and, um, you know, hopefully surpass it. Anyway, coming down to a four hour chart, the four hour chart looks pretty good. I don't really have any complaints with this. Uh, we barely missed my target. Remember, I had this target down here to be putting in spot buys and low leverage long positions. We barely missed that uh, to the tune of like maybe $50 or $25. Very, very little margin there. 
that it was missed by. So it's looking good. We're inside the cloud right now. So unless we start seeing some four hour closes above this level here, at about 11,865 or 875 or so, um, probably going to be staying flat. Trading in the cloud in terms of Ichimoku rules is definitely never recommended. So I'm not going to be willing to test my luck on that with a major size uh, or position right now. All right, so last thing real quick, just before we get into my 10x coin pick, this is kind of my thing. I really like going over this, and I think it's extremely useful for being able to figure out where the price might be gravitating towards based on where those liquidities are because of over leveraged positions on BitMEX. So uh, below us, we do have a 100x short for about 12 million contracts. That is right at 11,685. And then above us where all of the short liquidations are not too much we don't have any 100x ones but we do have a few 25x shorts this 150x short that's right above us at 11,876 most of the other short ones are, are up a little higher around 12,000 which which makes sense so below us there really isn't too much going on except for that 100x and then we've got another 50x short down here for 12 million at at 11,570. So I really think that since there isn't too much below us, maybe we come down and we we dip down and we try to liquidate this order right here. But it looks like we already attempted to do that here. And uh, whatever order this was, this, this level was safe right here. It looks like the price rejected off of a support level. So the price action will probably be gravitating higher uh, to kind of snag that liquidity up. Uh, that's definitely what the case is down here on Ethereum. I don't really do Ethereum too often, but normally Ethereum is a leader when it turn uh, when it comes to price action uh, compared to Ethereum and Bitcoin. Normally, we see the move on Ethereum happen first. Uh, we've got a lot of 25x and 35x shorts above us, everywhere from 409 all the way up to 415, 420. So that's going to be a really, really big area to be watching if Ethereum does end up moving higher and rallies and we get a continuation of this move that we've had today, I definitely expect a big liquidity grab and that would probably end up propelling not only Ethereum higher, but Bitcoin as well. Also, in the comments below, let me know some of your expectations for some of my upcoming videos. I know that I promised you guys a stop loss video on ATR, but let me know what else you guys would like to see on the channel and from my videos in general. I really appreciate the feedback. So if we switch on over to NWC, my 10x coin pick, right? I went over in my 90 second video on Twitter that we've been using this 100 EMA very, very strongly as support since way back here in almost the end of July, right? So we've used it as support multiple times here. And Honestly, so far, we're making consistently higher highs on this. Staying true to the fractal so far, I mean, this is looking very good. We're making our way up and everything. I'm going to leave this fractal here uh, for as long as I can so that we can track the price action of where I placed it. Overall, uh, in the midterm, definitely my target is between 32 and 35 cents up here where I have this box. I think if we break out of this little zone that we're in, that it's definitely going to go another 50% from here, which is about 32 to 30 35 cents. I'm very, very bullish on this project and especially the team that's backing it. Uh, looking at our indicators, everything looks primed for another pump, in my opinion. Our MACD is looking bullish. The RSI is sitting pretty right in the middle and the price action has been very, very steady all through here. So it's actually looking pretty good. We've had this really nice area of bullish accumulation this last week. So if we look closer onto the one hour chart, and turn on some of our Ichimoku. So Ichimoku looks a little bit like a mess right here on the one hour chart. It looks like we just broke above our EMAs as well as our Tenkinson line. So I expect I expect maybe a small retest over here in these levels, like, you know, maybe like at the 20 cents level or 20.015 or something um, and use that 
before we end up making a move higher. The four hour Ichimoku cloud, we're above uh, the Tenkinson and the Kijinson. Uh, they're directly below us, forming very solid areas of support here. Literally, every single time that we test that EMA line, we see a major, major move of buying. So, you know, every single time that we test this line, we just see a major price move, right? So we test it here, major price move, test it here, major price move. Down here, we had this really bullish uh, ascending triangle. Once we broke out of that, we retested it quickly, and then we moved way higher, making higher highs. On our lower time frame, we had another ascending triangle up here. We broke out of it, retested it. We made a double top up here at 22 cents, retested it one more time. And ever since then, we've been using this EMA retest support zone right here at about 16 cents. We've been using that as very, very heavy support all through here. I really don't see the price action moving too far below there. And it's looking like 20, the 20 cent level is pretty much going to be our new base of operations here. I think once we start seeing uh, like a weekly close, especially above, uh, you know, like 21, 22 cents, which I think is going to happen pretty shortly. Uh, 20 cents is definitely going to be our new, our new standard base for this coin. And then we're going to be moving up into that 32 or 35 cent zone that I've got marked up here. So I definitely expect something like this to be playing out. Uh, it's looking extremely good. It's looking really, really primed for another pop off. So uh, all I can say is this, as I mentioned before, this definitely has the potential to go 10x. I'm definitely very bullish on uh, the higher time frames, And it's something that I'm going to keep continuing to buy the dips on. So with all of that said, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in for another analysis video. Let me know down in the comments below how you enjoyed the video and make sure that you're liked and subscribed to the channel and following me on Twitter for all of those 90 second updates videos. Those are exclusive to Twitter. I do not release those on YouTube because they are too short. So if you're short on time, that's definitely a good way to get your quick analysis. That's it for today, guys. Have a wonderful week. And until next time, I'm Cobra Trading.